All right, let's talk some Trey Lance. I thought he played pretty well in this one. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but again, we grade these guys on curves, right? Uh, and I don't expect him to come out and be Tom Brady in his, in, you know, his rookie season, but already playing pretty well. Uh, it's cool to see. So let's just get into the film and what I liked about it. So like right off the bat, we had some stuff like this. So what's going to happen on this play is it's a pretty simple play, but it's still something that you like to see that Lance can do. In fact, I'm assuming whatever uh, happened in practice, this is just something that Shanahan liked that Lance can do because I think that Shanahan called this exact play uh, way more than he typically does. And it's already kind of a staple of the offense, but I think he just did it more. So I'm assuming that for whatever reason, either maybe they don't feel like Lance has a, you know, a full understanding of the entire playbook because he didn't get enough first team reps with some of these guys, or maybe they just liked him with this play. I don't really know because I'm not there. Right? You could you know argue at a pro or a con, but regardless, watch what's going to happen. Look, so Lance takes the snap, and this, it, you know, it's not the most difficult of reads, but again, when we're talking about him being a rookie quarterback, and I grade these guys on curves of, you know, if this is your uh, only second start or third start, I grade it differently than when it's your, you know, 300th start. We actually saw on one of these plays, Lance kind of quickly threw it to the flat, which would be the guy I've circled in black, just immediately without even looking further down the field. But then later on in the game, and we're still in the first quarter, so it's not that much later, he's now doing a better job of getting his eyes downfield as well. He then throws it downfield, makes a pretty good throw, and they pick up a first down right there. So something like that is good. Something like this is also a good play. Again, just a good throw to beat zone coverage. Uh, so, you know, he had some stuff like these that I was just like, oh, wow, that's good stuff from Trey Lance. Like, he's, he's running an offense well and a lot better than I would expect him to this early on into his career, quite frankly. But again, it kind of does make some sense. I mean, the system he ran in college is pretty similar to a Shanahan system, so it does kind of make some sense that he's able to do this stuff pretty well. And plus, the Shanahan system, you know, a little bit easier. But still, I'm not taking credit away from him. He did a good job. Now, let's talk some negatives, because there were some negatives, right? It's rare that you're going to have a game like this and not have any negatives. And, you know, we'll start off with the interception. I didn't think this was that bad. Uh, there, you know, it wasn't great. You know, throwing to the other team is rarely a good thing. But what's going to happen here is it's a cover two zone, and you have Brandon Ayuk, who had a really good game. He's going to start off on the left uh, side of the offense. He's running a deep route. The hope is that kind of, you know, the corner can stay with him, or potentially you push the safety back. And then Kittle runs all the way around, and then he's going to kind of get into that gap away from the, you know, past the corner, but before you get to the safety. However, right when this play begins, it's going to be pretty good defense. Corner does a good job, number 25 for Houston, of, uh, you know, reading this play. And for Lance, really what you have to do is you have to get this ball up more. To me, this is the classic example of guys just not exactly realizing how small these windows are in the NFL. It's an understandable mistake, and it's one that I expect a young quarterback to make from time to time. I really do, because, uh, you know, you kind of see, okay, Kittle's open, let me hit him, but you kind of don't think, well, this corner is actually going to, you know, get back in a really good way and cover a lot of ground, so I have to throw it in a perfect spot, even though it looks more open than it is. This is something that literally every rookie quarterback makes. It's a mistake that rookie quarterbacks make. So basically, my criticism here is he had a play where he was clearly a rookie. Like, it happens. Look, throws it to the other team, again, is what it is. I'm not going to freak out over this one. Although going on to these ones, this is kind of a little bit worse. So first we'll start off with this one where to me, there's no excuse to make this mistake. Uh, just I'll show it a couple times. It's a second and 15. That doesn't really matter. But there are, there's only seven seconds left and you're at the 31 yard line. So you want to gain more yards. But clearly there was a Houston player in front. Just throw this ball high. Maybe your receiver makes a great catch and probably not. And if he doesn't, then okay, it falls incomplete. Uh, you know, put it in that kind of spot. Weirdly, this ended up being a completion. But again, I'm going to show the other angle. I mean, you see this. This wasn't just a tipped pass. That was just a dropped interception. Great play by Brandon Ayuk. I mean, incredible stuff by him. That was absurd. He deserves a ton of credit. But again, kind of the thing where, to me, this is one of those, like, yeah, I would have liked to see him not make that mistake. And also one like this, looks like he kind of lost track of the linebacker. Interceptions can happen that way. He throws it so hard, I don't. I think it would be really tough for a linebacker to pick that one off. But still, that kind of can result in interceptions from time to time. So, listen, there were some negatives on tape. I'm, I think it's fair to point those out. But as a whole, I thought that there were way more positives. Like even one like this, where it's kind of similar to that last play, but this time he's finding that small window, and I'm going to have to pause it right here just because of the copyright reasons, but I'll also talk about it for a second. That was a good play. There wasn't a huge window, and he was still able to fit it through that small window. 
Uh, and so a lot of people are going to look at this play and say, yeah, you know, he, he made a good throw, but then Brandon Ayuk is going to get a lot of yards after it. Like, watch, Brandon Ayuk does, you know, end up picking up a big gain. Sure, Lance didn't really have any impact on, you know, the second chunk of that play, but he made a good throw that allowed his good playmaker to make a good play. And for Kyle Shanahan, that's kind of what he wants to happen. So I think really good stuff there by Trey Lance. And again, for a rookie quarterback, he made some good throws. And there's also always just stuff like this, where he can kind of always, at a certain point, pull this out. And this is something that Jimmy Garoppolo does not have as a part of his game. It's a second down and 10. And what I want you to look at is just where the defense, what the defense is doing. Let's say this is the running play. What can the defense do about it? Well, you know, five offensive linemen, they can block the four defensive linemen and then one of them can go up to block a linebacker you have an extra linebacker here however what they're doing here with an empty backfield is since Debo Samuel uh is just leaving the backfield right now so it wasn't it didn't start off empty but Debo Samuel starts to leave the linebacker is going to kind of follow him meaning that you basically have someone to block everyone whereas if the quarterback hands it off you don't have that luxury Look, Lance is going to take it himself. It's not even a crazy run. But again, these are the small things that Trey Lance brings to the table that Jimmy Garoppolo just doesn't. So these are the benefits to Trey Lance that Jimmy Garoppolo, quite frankly, doesn't have. So this is the argument. I think Garoppolo maybe doesn't throw a couple of those dangerous passes, but he also doesn't get that. So uh, and again, it's not Garoppolo has never thrown a dangerous pass either. So that's the argument of Trey Lance versus Jimmy Garoppolo. Also one like this where I've circled an edge rusher. What's going to happen here is it's going to be, uh, I almost wonder if this was just a complete like uh, blown assignment or something because it looks like the right tackle goes out to start to run block, but everyone else is just pass blocking. So I think that might have just been a mistake. Regardless, maybe it was just a great move, but either way, uh, again, some, maybe someone with you know, more expertise in offensive line play could help me out with that uh, in the comments below. But what's happening here is that there's immediate pressure on Lance, and it's the kind of situation where, again, Garoppolo gets sacked or maybe has to get rid of this ball and you know throws it away or whatever, or maybe even in the harm's way. However, you're going to see Lance is able to get out of it, and then he ends up taking a check down. It's not going to go for many yards. You only get a couple, but still, there's positive value above expected, right? It's more value than just running the offense regularly. That's a playmaking style play, and the hope is that it won't just be two-yard gains next week, but maybe 10-yard gains or maybe 20-yard gains. You know, you, those things do happen. So, yeah, uh, good stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of what I thought about Trey Lance. Uh, again, good for the 49ers. You're staying alive. Big game coming up against the Rams, who looked beatable against the Ravens team that didn't even have Lamar Jackson, although Tyler Huntley's pretty good. So, uh, there's certainly some hope. Divisional matchup, and you beat the Rams already this season. So, big game on the line. Uh, and I don't know. Do you go with Trey Lance? Do you go with Garoppolo? I think I probably still lean towards, I've been saying this all season, give me Jimmy Garoppolo if he's fully healthy. But I would say now, which I probably wouldn't have said yesterday, that if Garoppolo isn't 100%, I might feel better with Trey Lance in there. Trey Lance looks a lot more com comfortable and a lot more calm at this point than he did early on in the season. So maybe just being able to sit and watch and kind of learn the playbook and, you know, still get some practice reps, that's uh, that's helped him a lot because he looks better. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.